myself. I had to sleep with 14 people that day for low amounts of money. It ruined me. After the 14th, it was every day of my life sleeping with 14 to 30 men every day, going to different parts of Tennessee, walking the streets, being forced to do them and make that money. It was 2009 in the summertime. I was promoted to work at the truck stop, the TA, the TA truck stop. This saying that you were promoted to work at the truck stop is crazy. So I'm not familiar with that lifestyle. Case in point, if you've been here for that video with it where they was talking about the renegade, I didn't understand what a renegade was, but apparently a renegade is a street walker without I didn't know that. I thought it was something else. So apparently, the, the lot lizards are the upper echelon. I'm not even trying to be funny. When I became a lot lizard, that's what they call them. The goal was to walk around the truck stop in a circle and uh, whatever truck driver wants to see, they'll flash the lights. I worked there for a year. I was raped at the truck stop several times. I was beat up. I had to recruit women. I don't know if you know the term of choosing up, but my job was to take another woman from there by telling lies about my saying, He's a good daddy, you get off days, and they'll choose up, I take their money, I give it to him, and then they'll come to the house, and those are his women now. That's what you call choosing up, and um, working at the truck stop caused more trauma. Yo, have y'all ever seen that movie with, with Richard Pryor? Uh, dude was like, now look here, Mr. Pretty Tony. We can do the sentence setting, or we can get into some gangster shit. Me, because if you got robbed, don't help you, they'll say, Get my money or I'll kill you. I had to do a lot of figuring out being at the truck stop. I had a lot of growing up to do. No, and I couldn't tell them man my age. They didn't care, I don't think, anyway, because they knew I was young. I wasn't even fully developed like I am now. Working the truck stop for a year caused me to be more into a point where I'm, I'm just shutting down the have already took over me. I didn't want to live no more. I was up here just hoping someone killed me. I was used. Damn. I said, nobody gonna, gonna want me. Nobody's gonna love nobody like me. I asked. I prayed. I was, I was hoping for an escape. And I thought God abandoned me. So I lost myself. And um, one, on 2009, November, I'm gonna remember this for the rest of my life. His woman, the white woman, his bottom fell in love with a trick at the truck stop. She abandoned me. I was looking for her for an hour. The was calling me. He said, what well, the She's planning her escape. She has his keys. She has everything. I go to the truck. The truck driver chases me with a knife and they proceed to take off. I'm telling him they about to leave. He said, if you don't get my keys, I'm and throat. So you know what I did? I hopped on. And once he got in the car, there's a little compartment where you can hold on to where they shut the truck. I rode on the back of that hanging off because we was at exit 42. He went up to, I think, Laverne. The people at Waffle House, two guys followed me and they called the police because I was hanging on. My whole objective was to get the keys. That's it. So once he stopped, she didn't even, they didn't even know I was hanging on the back of the truck. We rolled for about a mile and a half. It was cold out and I held on. As soon as it opened up, I punched her in the face. I got the keys. The police was there. It was a whole bunch of going down. I heard the, the met me there and he congratulated me for getting his keys, the money. He said he didn't even want the he was like, I can't believe you rode on the truck. He was like, so I'm going to give you an hour off to work. So me risking my life on the 18-wheeler did absolutely nothing. But oh, my God. Yo, she risked her life to get an hour off. Mental control is something serious. Imagine having the ability to be free, but choosing not to be free. Now, I know that, you know, they drug these women up, but at the same time, at any point in time, you can call the cops and say, hey, I'm being abused, I'm being trafficked, but you choose not to. Made my job more harder. The ending part of me coming to the end, let me go back for a minute. Once that one white woman left, 
and didn't come back. They took me to a underground bunny ranch in uh, Dallas, Texas. Believe it or not, an underground bunny ranch. A lot of people are not familiar with that, but um, it's where a group of girls, about 15 girls is in there. They line up powerful people, people of power line up and come sleep with us. Because I was new, I stayed there for six months. I made them a lot of money. I paid my house fee. I was the top booked girl because they knew I was underage and they paid more for me. Oh, my other rewards sickening. was a phone call to our daddies and let them know the progress. That was our reward. And um, he had to follow rules. You couldn't step on nobody's money or anything. And I graduated, so to say. I was the highly rate booked. I probably made them over $2 million. I didn't see a dime. My job was to just get dressed, wash my body. Everything was, once the clients will pay to tie me up. And that's when I got concerned to be tied up in hog time. I never knew if it was gonna be my last time. The final straw was December in 2000. In 2009, I was getting, I was coming back from being there, back at the truck stop again. And That's this crazy, is where bro. the hellish nightmare became. A client that I've seen before, he said, I want to see you. It was $1,000 on the line. So I was like, wow, $1,000, I'm going I'm to go ahead and do it. He paid me, and then he had five other people come in the truck, and I got and I got beat up. Nobody, nobody used protection. They had beat me up so bad, they took my body lifeless and tied me to a pole. <sighs> How much longer I got with this, bro? All right, about a minute. Um, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I hear tragic stories. And I think about what I was doing that day. In 2009, while this was happening to her, I was in college. I was in college. I was living my best life. To think that the days that you live in your best life, somebody's at the verge of losing their life. Or somebody's going through some type of crazy struggle. You have to be thankful for every positive day that you spend above ground. Behind one of the trucks and they took off. It was it was winter time. A white woman found me and called the police. That was the final straw for me. The problem is the healing aspect. When you've been stuck on for so long and I didn't see no value in myself. I, I didn't want to live no more. I didn't want to see the value. I didn't have a value. I was ran through. I felt like the scum of the earth and I can honestly say that to you. It changes your life and I think people need to be more understanding about their surroundings and who they allow to be around them. Cause you never know this, the darkest day of my, myself. I had to sleep with 14. I'm not familiar with that lifestyle. It's certain things that we glorify that I think, if we take a deeper look at it, we shouldn't glorify it. Holding women as cattle, the level of PTSD that this woman must have. She probably tremble in fear every time she see a truck. For years, her and her vagina was going to war. Movies from the 70s didn't give a realistic portrayal of that lifestyle. Because when you look at those movies, we actually find some of those things funny. It's another movie from the 70s where this was um, gliding down some stairs. Like, I have never seen somebody manhandle some stairs like that. If I, if I find that video, I'm going to put it out there. And I, I think that jump was funny as hell. But being trapped in a mental prison must be the hardest time you can serve. This woman rode on the back of a truck in freezing weather to get this man's keys. Do you understand the type of mental control and mental hold you have to have over somebody 